Hey guys, Thomas Joseph here, and today we are tackling homemade pasta. Now, have you stopped short of making this at home because you think it's too intimidating? Well, actually, it's really simple to make with only a few ingredients. All you need to know is how to do it. To start our homemade pasta dough, what you need is a little bit of double zero flour. Double zero is a specialty flour that's available in a lot of specialty supermarkets, in Italian shops. Uh, you can even find it online. And it's this flour here that's used a lot in Italian cooking for pasta doughs, also pizza doughs. It has a moderate amount of protein in it. It's just very finely milled. So you get a really great silky texture, but it's sturdy and will provide enough gluten, which will give you that characteristic chew that we all love in pasta. To this, I'm gonna add a half cup of semolina flour. Now, a lot of people have asked the question, what is the difference between semolina flour and regular flour? Semolina is milled from durum wheat, and durum wheat is one of the ancient grains, an ancient uh, wheat varietal, and it's usually sold coarsely ground. It could even be kind of a, a medium ground uh, version, which this is, um, but you can still feel it. It's almost like uh, a fine cornmeal in a way where it has this grittiness to it, which is gonna add wonderful texture to our pasta dough. And semolina is used a lot in making things like pasta, but also couscous. It's the primary wheat flour in couscous. So whisk these two ingredients together. So this is two cups in total, one and a half cups of double zero flour and a half a cup of semolina. A really interesting thing about pasta making, you know, people think it's really difficult to make, and I think they confuse difficulty with time consuming. So, you know, there's only a few ingredients. It doesn't take much skill at all to make it. It just takes a little bit of time to make. So again, not difficult, just a little bit of time. It's a perfect project for a weekend. If you make this on the weekend, it can hang out in the refrigerator and you can use it on a week night. So I just dumped my flour out onto my work surface here. I'm gonna take a bowl or you could use a spoon and just create a well in the center of your flour. Now we need our eggs. So whenever you're making pasta, there's so many different recipes out there, but the main ingredients are flour and eggs. There's a little bit of water in this recipe and a little bit of olive oil, but really those are the two main ingredients. So I need in total six egg yolks and two whole eggs for this recipe. So I need a few more eggs here. So I'm gonna add one whole eggs to this mix. And then I need an extra yolk. And again, with different recipes, there are different kind of amounts of egg uh, sometimes recipes will call for all egg yolks. Sometimes recipes will call for whole eggs or a mixture of both. This recipe is really great because it gets added richness from six yolks, but then the whole eggs, the two whole eggs, add great structure to this pasta dough. So these are going right into the center of my well. I'm gonna add a tablespoon of olive oil. And this again is just added richness. And then I'm also going to add about a tablespoon, maybe even a tablespoon and a half of warm water. And now what you need to do is you take a fork and this is gonna get messy, so that's why I have it on a cutting board, but this is kind of the old fashioned way of making it. It's a really great way to demonstrate to you all how easy it is to make pasta at home. So I'm just whisking these wet ingredients together in the center of my well here. And then with the tines of the fork, all you're gonna do is you're gently gonna pull in, draw in the sides of the well, the flour, creating a very sticky, wet, shaggy mess, essentially. And the reason I like to pull it in gently and I like to take my time with this is so that it doesn't run all over the board. One thing that I think this might be missing a little bit of is just a pinch of salt. Now continue to work the flour into your egg mixture here. And you can see if you take your time with this process and you gently pull in the sides, you don't end up with a liquidy mess kind of running all over your board. You can keep it nice and isolated. And then once you get this into a nice paste, that center, then you can really get a little bit kind of messy and your walls can fall down on your well and really, we're just gonna mix this together now 
until it's a nice cohesive dough. So I'm gonna switch to using my hands now and keep a little bit of double zero flour on the side to flour your hands and just work the dough together, kneading it. And as I mentioned before, this is an all purpose pasta dough. So today I'm gonna to be making a beautiful raviolo, which is a giant ravioli, but you could certainly use this to make so many different things. This dough is coming together nicely. And at this point, when it comes into a nice ball, this is when you can start kneading the dough. Now, this is an important kind of process that you need to go through. And what it is actually doing is my hand movements here, the pressure that I'm exerting is forcing all of the kind of water and liquid ingredients into the flour. It's really saturating all of those granules of flour and it's developing gluten, which is gonna make this nice and elastic. And that elasticity is really what gives you that wonderful characteristic, that bite, that toothiness to pasta that we all love. So this is gonna take me about, I would say five to six minutes, maybe even eight minutes, till this gets nice and smooth and elastic. It should even get a tiny bit shiny at this point. I'm just gonna work the process through. All right, so the dough is nice and elastic. And now I'm going to portion this into two pieces and form it into a ball. Now you wanna wrap this in plastic wrap and it's gonna sit out at room temperature for about an hour. And I'm gonna use it in an hour. But if you wanted to do this, you could take it, wrap it in plastic wrap and put it into the refrigerator overnight. And that would be great to use the next day. So a nice little ball of dough here, wrap it tightly in plastic to prevent it from drying out. And what happens with this resting, all of the gluten that you just created, it has a chance to relax and it will be easy for you to then roll out your dough in the end. If you tried to roll this dough right now, it would shrink back up on you. So it'd be much more difficult to roll. So into plastic wrap and these will rest for an hour at room temperature. I'm gonna make the ricotta filling for the raviolo. So in this bowl, I have one and a half cups of whole milk ricotta. There are so many different types of ricotta out there in the marketplace. Look for a good quality ricotta that's really rich in flavor and that doesn't have a lot of moisture. This is a nice, thick ricotta cheese. You can see that there's not much moisture that's leaching out of the curds. And that's really what you're looking for here because we're not using any eggs to um, stiffen this filling up. So don't buy anything that has too much water. Also be mindful, this is whole milk ricotta. Please use that. Any of the, you know, part skim ricotta, those are gonna have more moisture to them. And they're actually gonna have like a bouncier texture to them as well. To this, I'm gonna add one ounce of Pecorino Romano cheese. Now, if you didn't have Pecorino Romano or you didn't like it, you could certainly use Parmesan here. That would be fantastic. Any really strong aged cheese is gonna add really great flavor to this filling. In addition to the cheese, I'm gonna add a tablespoon of extra virgin olive oil. And one of my favorite ingredients to add to really anything is some lemon zest. So I need a teaspoon of lemon zest and I'm using a microplane here, a nice fine grater and you really just want to strip the really colorful, bright skin layer of the lemon off. Anything beyond that can be a little bit bitter, so you wanna avoid that. You could certainly customize this mix to whatever your tastes are. So if you wanted to add some herbs to this, you certainly could do that. My grandmother would always add a little bit of dried mint to her filling. It was something that she still to this day does. Um, and so it's, for me, it's a little odd not to make a filling that has that right into the filling here, and then salt and pepper. Of course, it's important to season. You know, another signature kind of flavoring that goes really well with ricotta and cheeses and anything that's kind of has this, this sort of almost like Northern Italian vibe um, is a little bit of grated nutmeg. That always adds that wonderful, interesting flavor. So mix this together. And I'm gonna transfer it to a piping bag. And this is just for me to, you know, make it nice and easy and neat when we fill our raviolo, but you certainly do not have to do this. Um, you could do this just by hand as well. And an easy way to fill a pastry bag is to pull the collar or the excess bag down over itself and you can fit it in your hand like that. 
open up the center and then all you need to do is take your filling and you put it in your bag and you almost take the rubber spatula and press it against the side of the bag to get all of the filling into the bag. This is kind of a restaurant way of filling pastry bags that works. All right, so now it's time to roll out the pasta dough. So I have a little bit of double zero flour here and I'm just spreading it on my board. Take one piece of dough at a time and while it's in the plastic wrap, it's kind of easy to push it out to the sides and create a square because we are making square raviolo today. So if in the disc form it's in a, in a shape, it will help you to roll it out in that shape as well. Unwrap your dough, which is nice and pliable right now. This is gonna roll out really well and place it on your work surface. And then whatever your favorite rolling pin is, I'm using this French style rolling pin here. Uh, you're gonna roll this out into a 16 inch square. If your pasta dough has rested enough, it should roll out easily just like this. As I roll, I'm shifting the dough around, making sure that it's not sticking to the board. If you need a little bit of extra flour, you can certainly dust underneath and your rolling pin if you need to. This doesn't seem to be sticking. If your dough starts to pull back on itself while you're rolling it out, kind of shrinking back on its own, you can also just throw a clean kitchen towel over the top of this and you can let it rest for a little bit longer, maybe a few minutes, five to 10 minutes, and it should be nice and easy to roll um, as well. But it has a beautiful golden color to it. As you roll it out, you can see it has that signature shade that we know and love from our wonderful Italian pastas that we buy in supermarkets. All right, so I almost have a 16 inch square here. It is important to kind of hit those measurements that we're talking about because we want this pasta dough, especially for a raviolo, which is a double layered pasta, we want it to be thin enough so it's not too thick and gummy in the end. So you can almost see through the pasta, which is really great. And you see how elastic this dough is. It's not tearing on me at all, which means that it's a really great structured dough. All right, so now what I'm gonna do is trim this to a really nice shape, a 15 inch rectangle. And I'm just kind of eyeballing it here. Now, if you didn't wanna make raviolo and you wanted to make something else, you could kind of roll this dough up on itself and cut it into strips and create a really beautiful pasta. So now I'm gonna cut this sheet of pasta into nine equal pieces. So let's do that. 15, this should be five. 10, five, 10. So right now I'm just portioning the dough out, notching, we call it, to mark our spots. And I'm creating even size pieces and these are at about five inch intervals because we have a 15 inch square here. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna match up the notches at each end using a ruler, anything with a straight side, just cut all the way through. And we should have really beautiful, even squares of pasta dough. Now. We're gonna fill these. And I'm going to take that delicious ricotta filling. I'm just gonna snip my pastry bag here. And I'm gonna pipe about a quarter of a cup of the filling into the center of each of the raviolo here. You can always add, but you can't necessarily take away. Although I guess in this case you probably could, but um, it's better to go through and make them nice and even if you need to add a little bit of, a little bit more of filling into the center, you certainly could do that. Perfect. And now what we need to do is we need to create a little bit of um, a well in the center of our ricotta filling. And this is going to house our egg yolk, which we're gonna put right in the center. All right, that's the last one. And now for the finishing step, we need that wonderful egg yolk in the center. So 
taking really good quality eggs. And if you have a farmer's market and they sell eggs, chicken eggs, <clears throat> I would encourage you to get them there because they tend to have really bright orange egg yolks, which will add a wonderful impact when your guests or your family cut open this beautiful raviolo. So take your egg yolk and drop it right into the center of the well that you just created and then repeat this process with the rest of the dough. And I'm also going to roll out my other piece of dough to fit over top of these beautiful raviolo. All right guys, so all of our egg yolks are in their little cozy homes here. Now take a little bit of water and just brush around the edges here of your squares. And this will help the top layer to adhere to the bottom layer. And then the top layer has been rolled out nicely. Again, you're looking for that same kind of dimension, that 16 inch square. And then you're gonna drape this pasta over the top of our beautiful raviolos here and gently coax the dough down. And I like to start at one end of the pasta dough. So I like to start maybe closest to me. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my palms and I'm going to really kind of just use them to secure the dough together, encircling the filling, pressing all of the air bubbles out. And you're gonna to continue to work your way up around each of the fillings to create this really tight packet of pasta surrounding those little wells of ricotta. All right, our pasta dough is all pressed. The filling is nice and snug. And now using the fluted end of the pastry wheel here, I'm gonna create a nice, beautiful edge. So now you're gonna follow the underseam of the pasta, that bottom layer that we created. And I'm going to cut some nice, beautiful edges to your pasta. Here. All right, the raviolo are looking good here. Now get these to a lightly floured baking sheet and get some salted water boiling and we'll be ready to cook these delicious raviolo. All right, time to cook the pasta. So I'm gonna take one raviolo, maybe I can fit two in this pot of boiling water that has been generously salted. You wanna make sure you're using a good amount of salt so that it infuses into the dough and just gently place the raviolo in the pot and these will take about eight, maybe even nine minutes at a gentle boil to cook up nicely. What's really great about this recipe is that one raviolo, because it's so large and generous, will feed one person as a main course with a nice salad to it. So eight minutes in this pot, set your timer. All right, it's been about eight minutes and our raviolo are floating up to the top. They've really grown in size um, and they look super tender and delicious. So all I'm gonna do now is just drain them lightly. And I have a bed here of dandelion greens and kale that's been sauteed in a little bit of pancetta fat. Um, and this is a really great way to serve these giant raviolos here. Now, in addition to this, I'm going to use a little bit more of that pecorino cheese right over the top, a little sprinkling of freshly ground black pepper. If you wanted to, you could certainly use that delicious pancetta that we use to saute the greens. And then this recipe calls for a really simple vinaigrette to be tossed over top of the um, raviolo. Now you could certainly just use olive oil, that would be fantastic, but if you wanted to try this vinaigrette recipe, go on to marthastewart.com and look for it. This looks so delicious, you guys. Now homemade pasta at home, it doesn't take much to make delicious pasta, so give it a try. If you have any kitchen conundrums, reach out to us using the hashtag kitchen conundrums. We love to hear from you. We love to see that you're making all of our wonderful recipes, and most importantly, enjoy, guys. And as always, guys, click like and subscribe.